Hi, I'm Kevin and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about magnetic declination. What is it and how to set your compass to deal with it properly. So I thought I would do a short series on map and compass and navigation skills and I thought I would start with magnetic declination. Magnetic declination is one of the concepts that's probably the hardest to understand in map and compass work. Once you understand magnetic declination, uh, you'll find the rest of map and compass work pretty easy. So first I'm going to talk about the concept of magnetic declination. Then we're going to talk about how to set your compass to adjust for magnetic declination. Then I'm going to talk about how to uh, stay adjusted for a magnetic declination that is constantly changing. So just what is magnetic declination? Well, it is the relative difference between the magnetic north and the true north depending on where you're standing on the globe. So let me show you. I got a globe right here and uh, this is the North Pole, this is the South Pole. There's an imaginary line or axis running through those poles and the Earth rotates around that axis. That's the definition of the poles. All of our mapping conventions are relative to the location of the poles. All of our lines of longitude which run this way and latitude which run this way um, are in reference to the North and South Poles. So it would be just fantastic if the magnetic north and the true north pole were the same. That way my compass would point always to the north pole and we wouldn't have to make any adjustments when we're navigating. So just what do our compasses point to? Well, they point to the magnetic north, but more accurately they, they align themselves with the Earth's geomagnetic field. What causes this geomagnetic field? Well, inside the Earth is uh, ferrous magma and that magma is constantly churning uh, around the Earth's core and of course the planet itself is constantly spinning. So it's this moving uh, magma with an iron content which is generating an electric field. So unlike the Earth's uh, North Pole and South Pole which are on the same axis, the uh, Earth's magnetic North and magnetic South are not on the same axis. In fact, they're quite a bit askew. And so the lines of magnetism that run between them are very irregular. And that makes calculating declination even more challenging. And guess what? Unlike the, uh, the true north and south poles, which are fixed, the Earth's magnetic north and magnetic south are constantly moving. In fact, they're constantly moving independently of one another. So that makes calculating declination even more complicated. So hold that thought because first we're going to calculate declination of a fixed uh, magnetic north and then we're going to understand more about how it moves and how to adjust for it in time. So this is the true north uh, of the earth no matter where you are on the earth if you point north you're pointing to this location and the magnetic north this little dot has been situated for many many years in Canada's high arctic right about there. So it is possible to be aligned with both the North Pole and the Magnetic North. In fact, there's a line of magnetism called the Agonic Line where the declination is essentially zero. So if you're fortunate enough to live on that line as I have for a number of years near Thunder Bay, Canada, also right down through Minnesota and, and, and the States, um, there's a line uh, where the de declination is essentially zero. But that's not going to be true if you live on the east or west coast of North America. In fact, your, your declination can be quite significant. If you live out here in Vancouver, for example, um, your compass is going to point to the magnetic north, but that's very, very different direction than the true north. And likewise out here in Halifax on the east coast, um, north is, is still straight north, but your compass is going to be pointing significantly west of north. So I've got a very large compass here to help me explain some of these concepts. And let's assume that the frame here of the camera is uh, like a map and uh, north is always straight up. The compass has a base plate with a direction of travel. So when you're navigating with a compass, you're going to end up pointing the base plate in your direction of travel. Um, the compass also has a bezel and a magnetic north arrow. So this uh, arrow here um, is independent of everything else. It's always going to point uh, towards the magnetic north. No matter how you hold this compass, um, it will point in the same direction. The compass has a bezel uh, with north on it and 360 degrees of rotation and it's got this uh, red arrow underneath the magnetic arrow and uh, that is to help you navigate. When you navigate you're going to align the magnetic north with this arrow here um, and that will help you determine your direction of travel. 
So if I want to travel north and I happen to be standing on the Agonic line in the middle of North America and there is no declination, I'm very lucky. All I have to do is, um, that's my direction of travel, so I want to go north, so I'm going to point my bezel north. My uh, magnetic north won't change. And now to find north uh, as a direction, I'm going to rotate my base plate until my north arrow aligns with this red arrow underneath. Red in the shed is uh, how you remember that. And so, um, again, if I'm on the agonic line, there is no declination, then north and true north are in alignment and uh, I'm done. I'm ready to travel north. That's not gonna be the case if I'm over here uh, on the west coast in Vancouver. My declination is actually gonna be about 16 degrees. So the north arrow is gonna be not pointing the direction north. So if I'm in Vancouver, I'm always gonna have to subtract 16 degrees in order to find true north. If I, uh, if I don't adjust for that and I align uh, things up properly, then I will be pointing 16 degrees east of true north and we don't want that so um, what we want to do is always subtract if you're west of north and then uh, align your compass accordingly so if I'm in Vancouver that's how I'm gonna have to find true north I'm gonna have to subtract 16 degrees off of my bezel and then align my base plate with the north arrow and that then my base plate will actually be pointing true north so I'm gonna have the very opposite problem if I'm uh, on the east coast. If I am east of the agonic line, then my north arrow is gonna point slightly west of north. And so in Halifax, uh, you have the exact opposite problem, a 16 degree declination. This time it's 16 degrees west. So we're gonna to have to add those 16 degrees onto the bezel in order to find true north. So if your declination is east, you're always going to subtract from your bezel. If your declination is west, you're always going to add degrees to your bezel to find the direction of travel. So although I don't think adding and subtracting uh, from your bezel every time you want to use your compass is uh, all that difficult, it, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, but it can become complicated if you don't use your compass all the time. There is an easier method, a much easier method, and that is to get one of these. That is a compass with an adjustable declination. This compass has a very tiny little screwdriver on the uh, lanyard, and it's got a set screw right here. If I adjust that set screw, I'll adjust declination. So what really happens when you turn that screw and uh, adjust declination? Well, when you turn that screw, the red arrow that's inside the bezel um, that I've been calling the shed, that red arrow which normally points to north on the bezel, you're going to adjust that arrow away from north one direction or the other and that's going to provide that addition or subtraction that you would otherwise do manually. It's going to be a semi-permanent feature and you won't have to think about it. So this demonstration compass does not have an adjustable declination but I made my own bezel arrow uh, on my printer so I can, I can show you the concept. If you're in a location with a east declination like this, you'll be able to adjust that bezel arrow. The rest of the bezel will stay the same, but that bezel arrow will move towards where you want to adjust it to. So 20 degrees east declination. And now your compass is set um, for that declination in that area. So how do you find out what the declination is in your area? Well, traditionally the best source of information is topographic maps. Um, you're going to have a declination diagram either on the bottom or on the side and sometimes uh, there's no diagram but there, there's usually some sort of uh, written description of the declination. The declination diagram on your map is probably going to look something like this. This diagram has three lines each pointing in a different direction. One is true north and that is parallel to the edge of your map. Another arrow points to the magnetic north and a third line points towards something called grid north. We're going to ignore grid north for now, but we do want to know the total angle between magnetic north and true north. So in this case, we have to add those two angles together. We have to add 18 degrees in 18 minutes with 1 degree 54 minutes, which gives us a total of 20 degrees and 12 minutes. Just be careful when adding and subtracting degrees in minutes. Remember that 60 minutes is 1 degree. 
Your map diagram is going to illustrate one of these four situations. In each case, you want to calculate the angular distance between magnetic north and true north. Now the problem here is that the magnetic north moves around. Uh, in fact, lately it's been moving quite a bit. For the longest time it just hung around northern Canada, but in recent years it's been moving quite quickly and in quite a unique direction. Humans have been measuring the location of magnetic north for over 400 years now, and for most of that time it's remained uh, relatively stationary. It's been wobbling around in, in northern Canada, but it's been relatively stable. And it's only been in the recent decades that the magnetic north is shifting away from that area, and it's shifting uh, away at a very rapid pace. Now, if you look back at a topo map and the declination diagram, it's also going to specify a rate of change of that declination. This map here has a declination of uh, 0 degrees 56 minutes east, so about 1 degree east. The annual change says that it's decreasing 6.7 minutes. Some maps will indicate the change in direction of declination as either east or west, but if it says decreasing, it means it's moving towards true north, and if it says increasing, it means that the declination is moving away from true north. An issue we have is that maps get old. This map was originally printed in 1994, so the declination it specifies was good for then. That was uh, almost one degree east declination, if I add the changing declination over those 27 years, I'm going to get a new declination of 3 degrees west. So I've gone almost 4 degrees in uh, nearly 30 years. So when you think about it, it's quite difficult to predict future declination. We know that the uh, north and south magnetic poles are moving around quite a bit. They move independently of each other. We know that this is all generated by um, magma containing iron that's moving around inside the earth. So this is obviously something super hard to predict. So when they made this map and they added the section about declination, the projection they used was the best information they had available at the time. Back then, predictive models were looking about five years ahead. So any map that's older than five years is certainly out of date in terms of its forecasted declination. So if you're in North America, the best place to look for an updated declination is uh, either the Canadian government site or the US government site. In Canada, we have uh, uh, a Government of Canada declination calculator, and in the US they have a NOAA National Center for Environmental Information Systems. They also provide a declination calculator. You can input your longitude and latitude, and it will give you an updated declination for your location. So if I look at this 1994 map and I, I read the declination projections, I'm going to uh, get a new calculation for today of a 3 degree west declination. If I take the uh, longitude and latitude coordinates for the center of this map and I put it into one of these declination calculators, I'm going to get a new declination of 1.34 degrees west. That's uh, quite a big difference. So those original projections are now off and it's always best to use uh, one of the dec online declination calculators. So that's a really significant difference and what that tells me is that the, that the information printed on your map is getting old and it's getting old pretty quickly. We do know that the Earth's magnetic north is moving around, it's behaving differently than it used to, and it's moving more quickly than it used to. So the predictive models that they used to use to predict uh, magnetic north um, used to be good for about five years and then they'd recalculate. Now they're recalculating those models on a much more frequent basis. So unless your map is um, very, very new, less than five years, this information is probably already old and I would really recommend that you use uh, an online uh, declination calculator. So I'm planning a canoe trip this summer and I'm planning on traveling on this map here. This map, um, it's always good to look at the date information on the map. This map was reprinted in 1994, but it's an update. Um, so if I look in the corner, I'll find a copyright update for 1994. The original declination information specifies 1975. So the declination information on this map is very, very old. So before I go on my trip, I'm going to take the longitude and latitude of the center of this map, I'm going to plug it into a declination calculator, and then I'm going to write the new declination on this map uh, in pen, and I'm going to specify the year. That way I'm prepared for my trip. So I've got one last tip for you, and that is if you're going to be using one of these online declination calculators, that you should be aware that these websites will often accept different formats. So if you're reading the longitude and latitude off your topographic map, it's probably easiest to uh, enter it as degrees and decimal minutes. To do that, enter degrees first, then a space, then the minutes in decimals. 
If you don't put a space, the format's going to assume that you're entering decimal degrees, which won't put you in the same location. So that's it guys, I hope you understand a lot more about magnetic declination. If you like this theme of map and compass, let me know and I'll do more videos on this theme. Um, if you got something out of this video, please hit like, share and subscribe. As always, have a great day and I hope you find time to get outdoors. Here we go.